Today we're going to be looking at trigonometric proofs with OMG Math. Trig is my most favorite math of all the maths that I've taken. Um, proofs are also one of my favorite things within Trig, but they are hard for a lot of students and they require a lot of time and practice. So if you hate them right now, that's okay. Um, the more you practice and learn about them, the easier they'll become. So my problem is given right here. I'm trying to take this left side and make it equal the right side. The first thing I observe when I look at this problem is that I'm given sine and cosines. They both have powers on sine and cosine, which is going to help me as I'm trying to identify what to transform them into. My mission is to take the entire left side and make it look like the right side. So take all of that and turn it into cotangent. My game plan for doing this is going to be to use trig identities and start on the left side instead of the right side. You can technically start on either side, but it's easiest to pick the side that has the most to try and simplify that. So I'm going to try and take this left side and turn it into cotangent. So when I look at this, the first thing that I notice is there is cosine and cosine on the numerator. So my inclination is going to be to factor out a cosine and kind of see what happens from there. So I'm going to take cosine, I'm going to factor it out on the numerator so that I get sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine x. Once you start doing this process, try not to focus on your outcome and just try to simplify this side first and just hope that you get here at the end or focus more on getting to the answer at the very end, not as you're starting. When I get here, I notice that I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, our Pythagorean identity, we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. It's helpful to have a sheet of paper, something that has all your identities on it that you're using to reference as you're doing these problems. And when you see something that's either exactly an identity or very close to it, try to change it or plug it in. Whenever you see powers, you should be thinking Pythagorean identities because that's where the powers show up often. So I know sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, so it's now going to turn into cosine x times 1 over sine x. Cosine x times 1 is just cosine x. Sine stays the same, and we know cosine over sine is cotangent. So we know that we have simplified our problem because we got cotangent as our final answer. Just so we can make sure that we really understand proofs, let's try another one. The problem with proofs is that you can't really do one and then know how to do all of them. You just have to practice a lot and then eventually you'll have seen most of what proofs can look like. So for this one right here, whenever I see fractions, I'm initially going to think common denominators. So if you see a fraction, think common denominators. So I'm trying to take all of this and get it to simplify to the number 1. So on the denominator here, I have cosine squared y, and over here I have 1. So that means I only have to change this side. So I'm going to leave the 1 over cosine squared y, and I'm going to change this side. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by cosine squared so that I can make common denominators. So I'm going to get tan squared y cosine squared y over cosine squared y. Fix that. Okay, so once I'm here, I'm going to think when you have anything that is not in terms of sine and cosine, if you can turn it into sine and cosine, do that. So I'm going to take the numerator and I'm going to take this tangent and convert it into sine over cosine. So the numerator is going to simplify to 1 minus tangent is going to become sine squared y over cosine squared y. I leave it squared because tangent was squared times cosine squared y over cosine squared y. At this point, I see that my cosine squareds are going to cancel out. So I'm left with 1 minus sine squared y over cosine squared y. Right here, this is a Pythagorean identity. So we know that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. 
So if we move the sine squared over, 1 minus sine squared y is equal to cosine squared y over cosine squared y, and that simplifies to 1. Since that's what I was trying to get to, I am done with this problem. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. If you want to get better at math, subscribe to my videos here. If you want more information on math, click on my website link here.